Right, I'm having a marathon photo a thon and video a thon of all the cars. Finally started to get through this and finally got to pulling out the gorgeous Ford Focus Estate. This is the uh, 2013 with only 32,000 miles on it and it's the 1.6 turbocharged titanium X petrol. So should be uh, Yul-Z, shouldn't it? Yul-Z, Yulez, I don't care. <laughs> I'm in Devon. But anyway, yeah, should be a popular car because I imagine this is one that will qualify for not paying any of the fees. But I mean, above anything, it's just an immaculate motor. Like I say, 32,000 miles, full service history. Subscriber sold it to me, had the cam belt and water pump done only a few months before they sold it to me. And uh, yeah, they've just kept it absolutely beautifully. So yeah, it it's, it's, it's should be a good seller, I'd have thought, but I say I've just had it tucked away for ages and not got around to do it. So I'm about to do a full walk around video and it point out the blemishes, which I don't think there are going to be any to point out. It's so immaculate, this thing. And um, do the interior walkthrough as well with all the toys, because this has got the Titanium X, this has got self-parking as well as sat-nav, reversing camera, Bluetooth, cruise control, fully loaded up. Now... I did drive this a bit, I don't want to drive it again now because I'm going to get filthy, but I did drive this a bit and it does seem like the kind of car where, you know, you can do your family runs in it. But then if you want to have a bit of fun on your own, it's got that fantastic Focus chassis and that 1.6 turbo charge gives it some real pep. I think, I don't know what the horsepower is, is it 180? I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, let's get it videoed and photographed and get it up for sale and find a new home for it. So now I've finally got my cars valeted and uh, photographed and videoed, I'm putting them on auto trader. And what I'm noticing is, when I first checked a lot of these vehicles, the uh, the values were quite a bit higher. This one, um, I had it down as 9.1. I've just run it through auto trader. So that checked that last month, I run it for auto trader this month, it's at 8.6. I always like to go below auto trader, so I'm obviously gonna be a bit cheaper than auto trader anyway. But yeah, that was, that was quite a drop. And then I noticed also that when I put in my, um, I put in, oh, show you on my site instead i put in the ford focus estate i've had kicking around for a while the, if it told me that this thing was worth about 10 grand when i first got in which i didn't think it'd get to be honest i know it's got thirty-two thousand miles on it but it's 2013 um i checked it this morning it was coming out at nine four again i am still quite a lot cheaper than that but that's that's quite a drop and i noticed a few of them running through today so perhaps People have been saying for a while prices were going to drop. Perhaps they actually have started to drop. I hadn't seen it before, but yeah, I mean, this could be the start of prices dropping. It's funny, though, because I'm still being told by people that are buying at auctions that it's hard to get cars at the right price. So perhaps this hasn't actually fed through into the auction. I guess it won't do if people are stocked up. It's not going to feed through to the auctions for a little bit. It might be another couple of weeks yet, possibly. If people start logging on, and finding that their cars are worth less than they thought they were. When they go to the next auction, they're going to start bringing their bids down, and then that'll bring the prices down the auction. So it won't follow immediately. It will be a little bit behind. But it'll be interesting to see. We'll touch base in a couple of weeks' time, and we'll see whether we're getting feedback the auctions are starting to get cheaper or not. Now, regardless of what prices are doing, my stuff's still selling, and small cars are always in demand. And today, we've been offered this Toyota Yaris. I need to have a look around it and then put a bid in on it. Sorry for the noise in the background. It's uh, we're getting some cars cleaned. So first thing to do before we do anything else, of course, is make sure the history is straight on this because that's going to dramatically affect the value of price. Remember, if a car has previously been written off, category N non-structural, it could be worth 25% less. Category S structural could be worth 30, 35% less. So your first check to do is make sure the history has gone in the car. For that, obviously, we use Car Vertical. So as always, I've got the app on my phone ready to go. So just enter in the reg WG13 WGO and let car vertical do its thing. So report is back for the Aris. We've got a green tick for theft, a green tick for mileage, a green tick for financial and a green tick for damage. That means the Yaris has a totally clear history. Last known mileage, 40,991 miles. So nice line mileage. They're completely free of any damage history. Reckons average market value for the car is 4996 so we'll check that a bit later. This Yaris is good to go, but as we know, often that isn't the case. Check out this report. Look at the report that came back when someone checked this Alfa Romeo on Car Vertical. 
It had a warning for theft, a warning for mileage, and a warning for damage. The only thing it got a green tick for was its financial status. If we scroll down, Car Vertical even has pictures of the car when it was sold on damaged at a salvage auction. Car Vertical confirms the vehicle was stolen in the past and it might also have fake mileages. And we can see from the graph here, it looks like someone's rolled the mileage back. Car Vertical also confirms the vehicle was written off as an insurance write-off and it was a Category S, a structurally damaged vehicle. Now, no matter how good the repairs were on this car, it's something you'd probably want to walk away from if you'd done your car vertical and you knew in advance. So if you or a friend are out looking at cars or perhaps you got one before and didn't do a check, get to that link in the video description down below and get your own car vertical. And if you use the code CHOPSGARAGE, you'll get yourself a nice discount. Remember, it's especially important for those of you out buying from private sellers because they do not need to legally tell you if the car has previously been written off unless you specifically ask them. And even dealers get caught out sometimes, so do make sure you're getting your checks done so you don't make a big financial mistake. So as I said, anyway, our Yaris is all nice and clean on history. Body work wise, no scuffs on the corner of the bumper there. Alloys are dirty, but seem to be in good condition. Got a nearly new tyre on it. Nothing I can see it is dirty, but nothing I can see down the side of here bodywork wise here. Again, that rear alloy is good. Tyre's got a good amount of tread on it. Uh, only minor mark on the corner of the bumper just there. Nothing major, that's a touch-in mark. We wouldn't have to get full paint on that. This corner of the bumper's good, doesn't seem to be any marks there. Alloy's good again. Tyre's looking a little bit boldy on the edge. Might get that checked out. Well, it will be checked out because it'll have an MOT anyway, won't it? Down the side of here, all the paint works good. So it doesn't seem to be any paint, which is the biggest thing at the moment. Paint is taking so long on cars at the moment because cars that weren't worth painting before because the values are worth painting now. So all your paint guys are backed up. So again, if you're looking at cars at the moment, you might want to consider taking it with minor marks on and asking for a discount. Dealers may well bite your hand off for that because at the end of the day, the car's going to get out of the door quicker. They're going to save a lot of costs. So bodywork all good. So a quick look at the interior. We've got two keys, they're all in good condition, so we don't need to be replacing any of those. For Yaris is very rarely bad inside. They don't tend to be driven by younger people because they, uh, they're much more expensive than the sort of lower brand makes of cars, so they don't tend to get the hard life. All the plastics are good, we've got electric windows there, all the fabrics are good. What we've got in the steering, we've got electric mirrors. We've got Bluetooth on the wheel there. Oh, we've got a touch screen. It's got a reversing camera. I wonder if it's got a reversing camera. That's a bit of a shame. I think, um, I don't know if the camera's picking up on that, but the top of the gear knob's a bit worn. I think I might have one of those in the garage somewhere. I think I bought one accidentally before. The exact mileage display on the car mount 42,535. So mega low mileage. Is it reversing camera on this one? It is, reversing camera. That's a nice little add up. Well, add on, sorry. It hasn't got sat nav, the button's there, but it hasn't got the sat nav. It's got auxiliary input for the stereo. We've got the history here. Sorry that the camera's not picking up on it so well. 14, 15, 16, 17, and then a jump to 2022. Uh, they're all Toyota before. We could check if we're Toyota, if they had any in between, because that's Barnstable as well. But then we've got a gap till 2022. These are chain driven, so we don't have to worry about a cam belt. There are lots of other receipts and paperwork there, so it may be worth me going through that and seeing what the score is with that. But like I say, all the fabrics are good. Yeah, it's all nice in here. Start her up, make sure the idle's nice and... Starts up on the button. It's obviously a cold start. Nice even idle. By the way, can I give you everybody a tip who's watching this channel? If you're going to look at cars, a car dealership, and you want to look like you know what you're doing, don't immediately get in a car from cold and just rev the nuts off of it. That isn't going to show you anything, and it just makes you look a bit silly, to be honest. So a quick check at the back. Yeah, back seats are all good. This isn't going to need much in the way of cleaning up, is it? So far, it's looking like... A nice bit of stock. That carpet could do with a clean, but it's not outrageous. Uh, we've got an inflation kit. What we're looking for here is, is there any oil 
um, as in cans of oil or coolant. People tend to have a habit, if they've got a cooling problem or an oil problem, they leave the stuff in the car. It's a good indicator they've been having an issue. Let's have a quick look underneath the bonnet. So this is the 133 unit. That means it's the four-cylinder 1.3. They're quite nice little engines, these are. A bit more... Oh, yeah, four-cylinder. A bit more refined than uh, some of the other units you get in some of the cars, like the... I'd say it's a bit more refined than the Hyundai i10 engine, for example. Oil is clean, but we know it's not been serviced that long ago. I'll wipe that off and we'll double-check the level in a second. But no oil around the rocker cover or anything like that. Coolant's a nice colour. It's towards the low level, but it's within the two, so that's acceptable. I don't see any oil around the gearbox at all. That's all really dry along there. Redip the oil again. It's on pretty much bang on where it should be. Maybe slightly overfilled. Possibly, but I might have caught someone going up the tube just then. Now that all looks all right. So we won't do a prolonged test driving it because I know a lot of you guys don't like it. We're just going to run it around the yard quickly. The clutch is okay. Um, I wouldn't expect the clutch to necessarily be an issue in this until about 70 to 100,000 miles unless someone's been riding it. But that seems all right. Got into a few of the gears. Yeah, no resistance going into any of the gears there. Braking okay. Nurable clonks on the suspension. Yeah, it seems all right. Again, at 40 odd thousand miles, unless someone's been really potholing it, I would, uh, wouldn't imagine the suspension would be too much of a problem. This looks like, I'm just going to take it for a little longer run around the block, but this looks like a, a nice bit of retail stock. Well, it drives okay, so there don't seem to be any obvious reasons to hit them hard price-wise. doesn't really need any paintwork. Mechanically, it seems sound. Service history, so it's So, less Trader than says, top money with that mileage, that history, model 641 is the, the, the value of the car. But prep wise doesn't seem to be a little more. high to me. Um, I, I mean, if you had a big forecourt, you could put it up a 6495 and sit on it. I guess I think I'm most likely I'm going to be 5995ing it. Then I'll be great price on Auto Trader. It's quite a lot of cash to give away, but I've got to move things quickly here. I don't like them sitting about. I think we'll go and get an offer made to them and um, see how we get on. So if you want to see how I do get on, make sure you've got that subscribe button hit and I'll see you on the next video. Many thanks for watching. Catch you again soon. Just a quick reminder that the raffle for this fantastic XJ Jaguar is still live. It's uh, 2005 with 57,000 miles, I think it is on it. Just a brand new MOT. Massive thanks to everyone that's already supported this and entered. It's fantastic to see so many people supporting it because we are giving a big chunk of the cash from this raffle too. Sophie's Legacy, which is the cancer charity. Well, it's the charity that supports families that have kids in hospital with cancer. And uh, yeah, so this is up for grabs. I'll put a link in the video description down below. If you're watching on your telly, you'll need to get to the video description down below to find a link through to that raffle. But again, massive thanks to everybody that supported it. There is the alternative prize of the technical equipment, the diagnostics machines. If someone wins and doesn't actually want the car, don't know why you wouldn't, but you can choose a diagnostic kit instead. And then what will happen is the car will go up to highest bids and the money from the sale of the car will go 100% of that will go to the charity as well. So like I said, you'll find a link in the description down below. And if you want to check out this car, there's a lot of uh, videos on my channel for it. It is absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, again, I will say once again, massive thanks to the support for everybody that's already entered.